Hey crafters, thanks for joining me. In this video, I'm going to share tons of tips for masking. Hope you enjoy. So my first tip for masking is to mask using post-it notes. So I'm going to create a bookmark here and I'm going to stamp this butterfly. It's called mini flutter and I'm going to stamp it several times, mask it, and then I can decorate the background. So to create the masks, I'm going to stamp this butterfly twice onto some post-it notes and then peel off three sheets and cut out the butterflies. Now I like to use the full stick post-it notes, but you could also use the regular post-it notes for this and just use the sticky part. I usually find these in office type stores and they can be difficult to find, but they're fairly inexpensive. The great thing about using post-it notes is that you can reuse these masks. I usually use mine at least three or four times before um, they lose their stick. So after I've cut all these butterflies out, I'm going to place them on top of the ones I've already stamped and then I can apply some ink onto the background. Now my second tip for masking is about how you apply the ink. So when you're masking, it works best if you apply the ink onto the masks first and then drag the ink off the masks. By doing this, it helps keep your masks in place and it stops the ink from going underneath the masks accidentally. And in case you're curious, I'm using the domed blending tools from Ranger. So once I've finished adding ink onto the background of my bookmark, I'm just going to apply one of the Lavinia stencils and then add some ink over this. This is the Feather Leaf Stencil by Lavinia Stamps, and I'm just using the same ink colors to create a tone-on-tone -tone effect. So don't forget to use your stencils while you're masking off images. So now I'm going to remove those masks by peeling off those post-it notes, and I'll save those for another project. Now my next tip has to do with the areas around the stamped images and you can see a little bit of white peeking through under those masks. So to cover up those white bits I'm going to use a darker color and fill it in. In this case I'm using Copic markers and a darker shade of purple and a darker shade of green and just touching up those white areas around the butterflies. And you can see it makes a huge difference just filling in that little bit of white. And I'll repeat this on the other butterflies that need it. So my next tip for masking is to use clear embossing powder to mask with. So I'm going to stamp this garden poppy from Lavinia Stamps and I'm going to create another bookmark. So I'll start by stamping the stems of the poppies with some Green Oasis ink. This is VersaFine Claire. And I'll double stamp this so I have a nice impression on those stems. Now this technique is a lot easier when you have a stamp platform. Now I'm going to stamp the flowers with some Glamorous ink. This is also a VersaFine Claire. And I'm just wiping off the excess that got on the stems. And then I'll repeat this until I'm happy with the base of my bookmark. Next, I'm going to line up my stamp onto the already stamped image, making sure that I can see the image through the stamp. And then I'll pick it up with my stamp platformer. And then I'm going to stamp the entire thing with some Versamark clear embossing ink. Once I've stamped this, I'm going to add some clear embossing powder. I keep mine in a tub so it's easy to pour onto projects. 
and then I'm going to heat set this whole stamped image. Now this technique works best if you're using silhouette type stamps such as this garden poppy but you could also use an embossing pen and fill in the entire stamp image. So I've repeated that on all the poppies and you can see they're all covered in that clear embossing powder. So now I can start adding some wet techniques to my bookmark. So by using that clear embossing powder, it allows me to add the wet techniques. So after spraying this bookmark with water, I added some brushos. I put the emerald green at the bottom, the crimson in the middle, and then I added some Prussian blue around the top. And I'm just letting the excess brushos run off and spraying it with more water. And as you can see, the areas where there are those poppies, they are resisting the brusho ink and it's staying nice and red. So I'm going to continue adding some brusho powder and water until I'm happy with my background. And as you can see, the garden poppies continue to resist that brusho color. Now to brighten up my background a little bit, I'm going to add one of the mystical sprays. This is the Golden Temple, and I'm going to spray it in those white areas. And then I'll add a little bit more water and allow this to dry naturally. And then once it's completely dry, I can add a bit of ink onto this bookmark as well. So I'm going to use some Versifying Claire. This is in the twilight color and I'm going to blend it around the outside. And I think that really helps to finish off this background. Now my next tip for masking has to do with when you use clear embossing powder. And you tend to get little bits of muck on top of the embossing powder. So I'm just cleaning off those areas with a wet paper towel. This is more noticeable in real life, but you can see from the paper towel that there was a little bit of that mystic spray stuck on top of those poppies. And now that I've cleaned them, they look a lot nicer. Now, while I have that ink handy, I'm going to just stamp the three blessings from Lavinia Stamps and that will help to finish off the stamping on this bookmark. I will show the finished bookmark as well as the other projects at the end of the video. I just love how this bookmark turned out and it has a bit of a shimmer and shine to it when it catches the light because of that mystic spray. Now my next tip for masking is to use post-it note tape. I like to use this tape to create edging. So you can easily tear post-it note tape as you see here, and I'm going to use it to create some rough edges on the front of my card. So I'm just going to place that post-it note tape on all four edges. You could also use this tape without ripping it so that you have very straight edges as well. So it depends on what sort of effect you're going for. Now post-it note tape is also very handy to keep your projects in place and you can use it to tape your projects as I'm doing on my craft mat here. I also like to use it to secure my dies before running things through my die cut machine. You can reuse post-it note tape at least three three or four times before it loses its stickiness. So it's well worth investing in. It's definitely one of my most used tools in my craft room. So once I've finished masking off all four edges of this card, I'm going to apply some ink, starting with some aged mahogany, and then I'll create a nice sunset typed blend. Now, as you can see, I'm using quite a lot of pressure with these distress inks and the post-it note tape is quite secure and it stays in place without budging. And you can also see how the edges are starting to come to life 
as I apply more ink working upwards on this background. I'm just going to apply one more color to this background to bring this gradient to life. And I just love the combination of these colors. It's really starting to come together. So once I'm happy with the blend of this, I'm going to add a little bit of water to the background to add some texture in. And the post-it note tape will allow for a little bit of moisture. And then I'm going to wipe it off with a paper towel. Now, as I remove the post-it note tape, you can see those edges and how nice they look. Just gorgeous. Now, before doing any stamping on this, I'm going to make sure that it's completely dry by drying it with my heat tool. Now, I'm going to add some images from Lavinia Stamps. This is the Mira. And I'm going to stamp her in Nocturne, the Versafine Claire ink. And my next tip has to do with where you stamp images. So it looks really nice if you stamp some images outside of the masked area. As you can see with her dress and her hair, they're slightly outside of that masked area. I'm also going to stamp Broadwin at the top here. And then I'm going to use one of the plants from the foliage set and I'm going to um, repeat stamp this at the bottom. And I just love how you can repeat stamp this particular stamp and it looks like one continuous piece of foliage. And the last one of these I'm going to stamp slightly off of the mast area and just give it that nice look so it matches the corner of her dress as well. So my next tip for masking is to use masking sheets for larger stamps. So I'm using the masking sheets from Lavinia Stamps, but there's lots of other ones that are very similar that would work as well. So I know that I'm going to stamp with the Bumble Lodge the fairy toadstool and the fairy steps. So I'm going to stamp those first. Now one thing to be careful of is when you use the masking sheets, it can take a few moments for your ink to dry. So be careful that you don't smudge your image when you're cutting it out. So I'm going to stamp a few more of those fairy toadstools because I know that I would like to use at least four of these and then I'll let them dry for a moment before cutting them out. Another tip is when you're cutting out masked images, don't worry about the small details like those black lines. So I'm going to cut out this fairy toadstool and I'm just ignoring those blades of grass. You might have noticed earlier when I cut out that butterfly that I didn't cut out its antennas. So little things like antennas and blades of grass you can just skip those. It's not important to cut those out. And you can see at the fairy toadstool, I'm just going to cut it in this shape here. My next tip is to use your masks to help you plan your scene. So before removing the backing paper on these masks, I'm just going to play around with them in the scene until I'm happy with the way it looks. So sometimes it's handy to have this visual reference before you create your finished card. Now my next masking tip is to stamp things in the foreground first. So for instance, I knew that I wanted the Bumble Lodge to be my focal point and I'm going to stamp that first. And then I'm going to stamp the fairy path next so that these steps will disappear behind the Bumble Lodge. Similarly, I want the fairy toadstools to go behind the Bumble Lodge, so I'm going to stamp them after stamping the Bumble Lodge. Now I wanted one of these fairy toadstools on the far right of the card to be in the front, 
because it would be closer to the person looking into the scene. So after putting these two masks on, I'm going to stamp that fairy toadstool on the far right before stamping the one towards the middle of the card. So by planning out what you want to have in the foreground, it helps you figure out when to stamp things. So once I've stamped this one and put the mask on, I can stamp the last fairy toadstool. And this one will now appear as if it's behind the one on the far right. Now using masking paper can be a little bit fiddly, as you can see here, but it does, it is very helpful for using on large stamps. Now I'm just going to apply some of that leftover post-it note tape and manipulate it so that it's the correct shape for the bottom of my scene. And then I can apply some ink, again starting on the masks first and then working outwards. And I'm going to use another one of the Lavinia stencils to add some texture. This is the Pebbles stencil. And once again, I'm just using the same color so I get a nice tone on tone effect. Now to mask off the ground, I'm just going to reapply that post-it note tape and manipulate it so that it's the right shape for my ground. That's another great thing about the post-it note tape. It's very easy to manipulate. And then I can apply my nice gradient for my sky. And on this magical card, I'm going to use a pinkish gradient. Now I will go over those blades of grass on the fairy toadstools with a green pen afterwards, but I will show the finished card at the end of this video. So I'm going to continue inking up the background. And once again, I'm applying ink to the masks first and then gradually pulling the ink outwards. And once I'm happy with the background, I will remove the masks and save them for later. And off camera, I also added another stencil around the bottom, which you'll see at the end of the video. First, I'm just going to touch up those little white areas around the fairy toadstools using a dark pink Copic marker. Now you can see the finished background and I added lots of sparkle and fun colors. And the other card with the birthday greeting at the bottom. And the first butterfly bookmark with all the pastel colors looks fabulous. And the last bookmark with a little bit of shine and that mystic spray. And I plan to laminate my bookmarks when I'm finished. Thanks for watching and I hope you found this video inspiring. If you haven't already, please subscribe so that you're notified whenever I post a new video. Have a crafty day!